my name is Laura Wygod, and I am the creative director for Mono Means Communications in downtown Honolulu. And we're here today to talk about content marketing. Um, here's a very technical definition of what content marketing is. It's a marketing technique of creating and distributing valuable, relevant, and consistent content to attract and acquire a clearly defined audience with the objective of driving profitable customer action. And what that basically means is that you are going to be creating content to attract people to you and your brand that hopefully will someday end up in a sale. But that is not the intention of content marketing, to sell to people. The intention is to think about your audience and what they might be looking for as far as information about your product, service, or industry. So the most important thing right there at the top of the bullet list is it's about the customer and not you. And honestly, if I would say this before every single slide if I could, because it's I'm asking you to reverse the way that you've been thinking, which is how do I get people to know my company? How do I get people to know my products and my services? Instead of thinking about, hmm, what is it that my audience actually wants? And so that's what we're gonna learn today. So you're thinking about your audience needs first and not yours. And another important aspect of content marketing is that it pulls customers in with relevant content instead of one size fits all. So you're not just tossing out general content. You're thinking very carefully about your audience. And I'm using the word audience singularly, but honestly, you're gonna have several audience and we'll get into that later. Content marketing is a two-way conversation instead of a monologue. So your content that you're going to be creating is not like a brochure that you hand to somebody and walk away. Um, you're going to get feedback. You're going to be doing this in social media. You'll be using it on your website. You might be sending out um, e-marketing newsletters or e-blasts, and you're going to hear back, So, um, which is wonderful because it helps inform you about how to tailor your content to meet your audience's needs. Um, and this is a huge thing. Content marketing builds your credibility with your target audience. And this is the main focus is that you want to create yourself uh, or uh, let it, people see you as a thought leader. So instead of just being the person that sells this product or service, you are going, you want to be the person that people turn to, to learn more about your product and service and not just about you specifically. Um, one great thing about content marketing is that it's dynamic and easy to change, like most things are in marketing today. It's not the olden days where you would print out um, a catalog or a brochure, and then you had to wait a whole year before you ran out of your old collateral and could update everything with fresh information, at, at which point it will be all out of date in a few months. So that's the beautiful of um, electronic marketing today is that um, you can listen to your audience and adjust and constantly be revising what you're doing. So content marketing is wonderful for that. Content marketing maximizes word of mouth referrals. So it's not just, um, oh, you need to check out this company, but when you're, and let's take social media as an example or a digital newsletter, um, when you produce something that's so wonderful that people want to share it with their friends because you're educating or entertaining people, um, this is a wonderful way to attract new people who could become future customers. So content marketing is wonderful for that. Content marketing is risk-free. If it's not working, stop doing it. You know, it's, it's that simple. So that's it's a beautiful aspect of content marketing. And very importantly, content marketing happens before and after the sale. So yes, you've done, you've provided people with this amazing content marketing, and now people are paying attention to you because you clearly know what you're talking about. And then you, you know, engage them enough that they decide to buy your customer, uh, your product or service, uh, and now they're your customer. But you retain them by continuing to provide them with amazing content. Um, we're talking about content marketing today as if it's a brand new concept. And yes, it is very hot right now because people are paying attention, but it's not brand new in history. So I just want to go you very quickly through a history of content marketing so that you can see and understand how very effective content marketing is. 
So let's start in 1895, the first example that I could find, John Deere, you know, they make tractors and all kinds of farm equipment. And they started publishing a magazine called The Furrow. And it was written as a journal for the American farmer. And by 1912, it already had a circulation of 1.4 million. Now, John Deere is not a uh, publication. They're not a newspaper, they're not a magazine. They created this just for the farmer and they, they provided content that made the farmer so interested that they're reading their magazine. And of course, they're getting hooked on John Deere products. A few years later in 1900, Michelin created its Michelin Guide. Michelin is a tire manufacturer, but you might not even know that by now because all we know is that the Michelin Guide is where you go to find the best recommendations for restaurants. So they created the Tour Guide because at the time that they started um, producing this, not a lot of people really knew what to do with the car if they even had one yet. So they wanted to try to encourage people to get on the road. And the way they did this was by creating guides for motorists. And now they had uh, road trips they could plan. Um, so the first 35,000 issues of the Michelin Guide were actually given away for free. And we all know where it ended today. Um, Jello was invented in 1897, but it didn't sell well at first. People didn't know what it was. And it, it's kind of strange if you're not um, already into high-end uh, dining of aspic at, at those, in those times. In 1904, they published a free recipe book and hit a million dollars in sales within two years. Again, free content that they gave away for free and it made people interested. And it also told them what to do with their product. So that was a, a really smart move on their behalf. And then finally, my last example, in the 1930s, Procter & Gamble created the first radio serial program in order to sell their soap, Oxidol. And of course, now we all know the term soap operas, and this is where it started. So all of these companies did not, they were not publishers, and they were, they were not uh, radio producers, and yet that's what they did in order to get sales, and we all know these companies today. So that's just a little brief background. The next thing I want to show you is a really good example of a company that's using content marketing to the nth degree today. And I'm showing you Lego. Um, on the right hand, you can see architecture, Batman going down to DC Comics, Jurassic World. All of these are all separate uh, worlds that Lego has created. So not just the bricks. And we all know, and that's what they make but their content marketing is top level. Every single one of these types of worlds has its own microsite. They've got serial style movies running on cable and on their own website. There's cartoons, there's feature films. We've all seen it, right? Um, they've got a community platform, social network, Lego magazine. They even have Legoland Park, right? So, I mean, you wouldn't think of Lego as, oh, they are an amusement park developer. They make plastic bricks. And this is where they've taken it. Um, I skipped over club meetings, but again, I just wanted you to see uh, an example of a company doing a really excellent job of content marketing um, so that um, all, all, everybody knows where to go if you're a Lego uh, aficionado. Okay, great. So um, let's talk about the purposes of content marketing. So there are two types of content marketing. The first is inform informational intent, and that is consumed as part of your audience's research or interests. So they are interested in something about your product or your service. So they're out there and just vaguely like a sponge, just taking in everything that they can learn about what it is that you do. The second type of content marketing is known as transactional intent. And this is when your audience intends to complete a transaction. And you'll see a little graphic just below that. That is the buyer journey. So, and we have a little funnel. Some of you may already be familiar with the concept of, of funnels for sales and other and marketing. So at the top level you, of the funnel stage is awareness. And this person is not, isn't seriously considering a purchase yet. They're just keeping an eye on things. So then we get to where we kick in with the content marketing. And at the top level, like I just mentioned, is the informational intent. And this is the time where you're, um, they are researching and it's your opportunity to convince them that you know what you're talking about. 
So they are, they're starting to think about a decision. So now they're not just um, taking in general information. They are researching to find out what they need to know to make that decision. And this is where the informational intent comes in. Um, after that, we move on to transactional intent. And this is where you have an opportunity to convert them from somebody who's just interested in your product or industry in general. And you want to convince them that they should be turning to you when they're ready to make a purchase. So at this point, you have to demonstrate to them how you're going to make their objectives and how you're going to um, deliver on your business partnership. So let's first go into informational intent. So informational intent is designed to help, educate, inform, teach, and or entertain. And this kind of content should be created through your audience's lenses, not your brand. I, I threatened you with telling you to remember how important it is that this isn't about you, but about your audience. And here's my first promise uh, that I fulfilled to remind you, this isn't about you or your product or service. This is about what they are looking for and what they're trying to learn right now. And this content should be convincing. It can be emotionally driven, but generally you want this type of information uh, or content to be include industry research and reports. So it's not, um, you're not giving them content that's couched in marketing and it's all very beautiful. I do marketing for a living, living. I know how to make things beautiful and attractive, but that, that isn't where they are right now. They're just looking for information and you're there to teach them and give them that information. Um, this is your chance to kind of change their mind about the way they might be looking at something. There might be a product that they hadn't considered before for whatever reasons, but you're giving them content that is going to teach them to think differently about that. And as I mentioned at the very top, here's where you're going to um, present yourself as a thought leader so that when they think about your product or service, they're thinking of you because you have already taught them so much. Um, and a, a great type of content marketing at this level is how to. So um, I'm a graphic designer, so I might want to do content about how to choose a graphic designer, how to create a logo. These are all ways of teaching people uh, about what I do without telling you hire me. I'm just going to teach you how to hire somebody and then you can take that in and then later on when it came time to make a decision then you think you remember me and how brilliant my uh, content was. Um, the second form of content is transactional intent and as you may remember at this point we have them interested they're paying attention to you and they do see you as a thought leader and we have to figure out how do we make them an actual customer. So at this point, the kind of content that you're going to be providing is to let people learn more about your product or service and then underscore the reason to purchase it. So this is where you are providing information about what sets you apart from your competition. Um, and that gives them a reason to choose you over other people in addition to the fact that you've already established yourself as an expert. So transactional intent should be factual it should reflect your niche and it should reflect your expertise. So um, signs that people have, can, have converted from intentional intent into transactional is that they're using search terms like buy, coupon, discount, and shipping. So at this point, they are ready to buy. How do you find out um, whether they're using those search terms? In your Google Analytics. So, I'm assuming most of you or all of you at this point should have a website. Um, you can also see perhaps in your social media analytics and you wanna see what people are, you're looking in your referrals. How did people find your website? And um, you can see if it's coming in from Google or some other search term or search engines, it will tell you what they searched on to find you. And when you see these terms buy, coupon, discount, or shipping, you know that they are leaning towards actually making a purchase or a decision. So what are you providing as far as content for a transactional uh, intent? 
uh, case studies. So now is when you bring in, um, here's a customer or a client who um, is one of ours and by hiring us or buying our product, we made their life so much better. And here's the case study. Um, so at this point, it's still factual and it's still pre uh, presenting really uh, informational information, but um, now you can start to pitch yourself a little bit, all right? Um, transactional intent can also include um, things such as promoted events. So, uh, and product demonstrations, product brochures, advertorials. I don't know um, if, if you're unfamiliar with the term, but an advertorial is something that is, it's, it's an ad, but it looks like an editorial piece. Um, for those of you here in Hawaii, you might watch um, Honolulu News Now, News Now every morning like I do. And they sometimes have these pieces where the hosts go out and they're trying out a new restaurant. And everything's delicious. And it looks like uh, a regular journal, journalistic piece. But those people have paid for that. And so that's why it's called advertorial because it's paid for and promoted by a company, but it, it feels like it's um, an original piece, like it's editorial. So um, this is a good time to be doing advertorials. Um, product reviews are really great because again, they're getting information and they're hearing from existing customers and clients, but um, they can make a decision. This. Uh, you probably all shop on Amazon, all that type of thing. And you see, the first thing I do is click on reviews. I wanna see those five star reviews before I purchase them. I don't even read, and then I read the number ones, okay? So uh, that gives me, I feel like a general idea of um, how their customers feel about them. So this is a good time to bring out your best testimonials and product reviews. Um, and you can also feel free to do competitor comparisons. This can be tricky because um, in, in the olden days, it used to be the number one rule of advertising is you don't mention your competitor because you're giving them free advertising. But however, if your niche is so specific and your um, benefits are so superior to a competitor, this is your chance. And this might be... Uh, a case where in social media or on your website where you see those um, comparative charts where you have yourself listed with your competitors and then the little dots that show you, well, which features do they have versus you? And of course, you're gonna pack that table with all of the features that you offer that they don't so that they see nothing but dots in your column. So, Analytics are really important in marketing. Um, for those of us who are marketing experts, we have to basically defend our existence to our clients and the way that we do that because it's not, it's easier with sales. You can say, well, I brought in this much money in sales this month and it's clear that you are providing service to the company. With marketing and PR and advertising, it can be a little trickier because you can just have an impression that you were helpful. So what you really need are analytics. You have to show the results from your work. So how do you analyze your content marketing to see if it's being effective? So um, you want to do uh, research brand awareness. So you want to find out uh, how popular your brand name is. You want to know um, what the awareness is of your product, your service offering. And you want to um, have an awareness of what your brand attributes are, which is what distinguishes you from your competitors. How do you measure uh, analytics for content marketing? So first one I have listed here are surveys. You run a free three question brand awareness survey to see how recognizable your brand is and how your brand ranks amongst your competitors. If you're impressions have been, and that gives you an idea of what is the most popular content. So I, I know most of people are looking at those numbers because they want to say, oh, look, we got more followers. But really what I want you to look at is to see what's the most popular content. We do this for our clients routinely, 
And at the end of the month, we let them know here were the top 10 posts that got the most response. And, um, and then we can give them some advice on what they should be including in their content for social media. So for instance, when I write social media posts, there's a balance of um, self-promotional marketing, but I also want to give them industry content so that they become thought leaders, like I'm teaching you here today. Um, but also very popular is when people post personal stuff and behind the scenes content and that sort of thing. But you won't know what's most popular until you take a look at those numbers and what's popular for one of our clients may not be the same for what's popular with your audience. So check out your social media for all those numbers. Okay, Google Trends. You can use this, um, and I'll, I'll provide you links at the end of this, so don't worry. Um, you can use Google Trends to check on your own brand awareness. Um, you might start right now, and if you're niche enough and small enough, no one's heard of you, you might not even show up in Google Trends yet. But start looking now, because otherwise you're not gonna know what progress you're making. But you can also use Google Trends to track the awareness of your industry or product in general, and also your competitors. I know you're busy, there's a lot to do, marketing can take a lot of time, and you're busy actually running your business and making your products or developing your services. So that might seem like a lot of extra effort, um, but it's important to see where you stand against your competition. So I highly recommend that you cover all of those things in Google Trends. Google Alerts. So if you're not doing this already, this will take you literally two minutes to set up. Um, Google Alerts lets you enter any kind of keyword and then you will get Google Alerts in your emails every day that let you know, you know, anything that they could find in the press, on websites, anything that's out there and they will let you know. So you definitely wanna have your company name in there. You want um, maybe the major players in your game in case they're being mentioned in the press and you wanna include your product and all of your services. And if you want to, and I recommend it, you might wanna also be doing Google alerts on your competition. It's great to know where your competitors stand. It's also great to steal ideas. Um, earned media uh, is another way to track content marketing and uh, earned media is uh, organic mentions and third party publicity. So it could be that you write a press release for your company and then you pitch it to the local media um, and you get mentioned in an article that they might be doing about your industry or about your area. And um, it's called earned media because you haven't paid for an ad. You're not paying for any of this marketing. It's just getting mentioned in the press. So the Google alerts will let you know when you're being mentioned in the press and it, consider it a big win if you get any kind of earned media because it means you didn't have to spend money on what's basically free marketing. And then finally, uh, referral track. Uh, tra referral traffic on your website. And this is getting back to Google Analytics and you will want to track your referrals there. So again, like I was telling you, um, when you're converting somebody from in, uh, informational to transactional content, and I asked you to look for terms like search and buy, um, but you also want to just see where people are coming from. So a lot of the time people have your website address and they're coming to you directly from there. Um, also very likely it's Google directly and that's where you're looking for your search terms, but it could also be coming from somebody else. So it could be a former client who is raving about you on their website or recommending you. So um, you want to check out and find out where your brand awareness and all of these, um, the response to your content marketing is coming from. Okay, who is your audience? Well, as I mentioned at the top, you don't have just one audience, just like you don't have one customer, right? You don't just have um, one type of person that buys from you, there's all types. Now it could be that you're focusing your efforts on your number one customer because you know that they are the most likely to buy from you. But with content marketing, your audience isn't just your customer or even potential customer. Once you start putting out e-newsletters or you're on social media or even on your website, all kinds of people are going to come across it. So you want to think about the different types of audience members. And these are four audience archetypes. Okay. 
So the first one is known as the poet. And the poet wants to be inspired. So the type of content that the poet is going to like would include your values, your um, community involvement. Um, uh, I have to tell you, I identify very strongly as the poet. So I know that I'm speaking about myself when I talk about this particular archetype. And I'm the kind of person that um, has an open mind. I have very strong ideas about things, but I'm always ready to be talked out of it. I've, I've had, you know, a Republican talk me out of ERA, even though that's, those aren't my politics, because I want to hear and I want to not be fixed on an idea ever. And so that's the type of audience member the poet is. Um, and also progressive. And what we mean by that is that the poet is going to be the first type of person to say, um, excuse me, but where are your products manufactured? Because somebody like me wants to be sure that there are ethical um, um, standards in place for anybody that I buy from. I'm also the first type of person to jump on board with a, a boycott. So the poet is asking you, what do you stand for? Challenge me. And um, you talk me into it and I'm on board. I will pay more for something if I feel that um, your product or services is aligned with my value. Um, next, we have the professor. And the professor wants to be educated. So that's what you're going to do with the professor. Uh, the types of content the professor is looking for is thought leadership. That'll be uh, one out of a million times I point this out to you today, that you want to be the person that they turn to when they want to learn more. Um, so they want um, your, your expertise. They also want to be mentored. And actually, LinkedIn is a really good spot for mentorship because their people are learning how to improve not only their careers, but their industry in general. So um, mentoring people in your own industry is the type of thing that the professor is looking for. Um, so you wanna give the uh, professor research reports, data visualization is really great. I, I love a good infographic and they're interested in industry benchmarking. So when you're speaking to the professor, you're, he is asking, or she, sorry, um, teach me something I never knew about my role. Uh, the professor sometimes thinks they're already an expert. So it's your chance uh, to uh, absolutely agree with them, who would disagree with the, the professor, but it's also your chance to teach them a little bit more. The next archetype is the preacher, and they want to be informed. So the type of content the preacher is looking for topical news and trends, listicles. A listicle is, and we've all clicked on them because they're so seductive. Um, so that's like the top 10 reasons that you should be doing business in Hawaii, right? That, that kind of thing, the top five, top three, whatever that sort of thing is. And you can come up with these. They're fun to come up with and they're really grabby. Part, one of the reasons they're grabby is that they, um, they let the audience know that there's a definite limit to uh, absorbing the content that you're providing. So if you tell me the top 100 things to do in Hawaii, that might be something that I bookmark before I get ready to go. Um, but otherwise, uh, top three, top five, top 10, that's, that's a good limit. Um, a lot of people aren't gonna scroll through more than the 10, but listicles are really uh, popular with the preacher. Um, checklists. This is a, another great one. We have a client who um, builds fine custom homes uh, and it might be uh, things like, well, have you thought about how you want to use your outdoor space? Will you be dining outside? Are you dining inside? Um, does anybody need um, uh, a special access to the building? That kind of thing. And when you provide content like that, it helps them remember things that they hadn't thought of. And then they're like, oh, I can count on this person to um, let me know what I don't already know. Um, uh, press uh, comments, uh, communications content and press releases. This is, this is fine at this point because the preacher wants to know more about you and not just your product or services or the industry. And this is a great opportunity with the surveys and the FAQs and the Q and A's. And the preacher wants to say, make me be more productive and successful. And it's your uh, job to inform them how you're going to do that. 
And then finally, the fourth one is the promoter. And the promoter, love the photo, um, is a person of action. And they want case studies and they want to go to events, whether that's online and now we're starting to open up to in-person events. And the promoter is the one that's going to attend these events. Um, they are interested in your advertising and special offers and the reviews, the testimonials. And they are interested and they are ready to move forward. So this is the person that you need to be providing them with that snappy content so they can make a quick decision. Yay, another funnel. Okay, so this is a great content marketing funnel and it gives you some idea of the point at which your potential customer is in and the type of content that you should be providing to them. So you're not going to be providing just one type of content to one person at one level in this funnel. You want to be doing these things all simultaneously. So like we started at the beginning, the top level is you're going to just entertain them. And you, what you wanna do is you're breaking through the clutter of all that viral content. Um, and you're gonna do this by ads to amplify reach. So we use Facebook and Instagram ads all the time because they're really effective and they are really cheap. So um, you have to make sure that what you have in place are really strong social media accounts to begin with. What you don't want to do is run Facebook or Instagram ads, and then they follow the link, they go to your social media account, and they see that you haven't posted anything in two years, six months. Like They want to know that you were there this week and that you're a, a real company and that you can be uh, counted on and that you're still in business. So at this point, um, you just want people to know that you're out there. Your customers may already be following you. So it, it's, we're not thinking about them. We're just getting your name out there. So when they see the ad, they might want to go to your account and start following you. So that's the top level entertainment. Then we go down to the next notch and we are going to start educating people. So this is when they're learning and now they're aware of your brand, they're gonna to start to engage with you. So your content should be engaging, episodic educational content, um, which builds brand trust and likability. So for instance, one of our clients, I'm gonna actually get to them at the end of this in a quick case study, um, they do wealth management. So uh, they produce a newsletter and it might have like this, this month they've got the top 20 myths about financial advisors, but I'm feeding it to the public in numbers one through five and the next week it's number six through 10. So that's what we mean by episodic. So they know there's going to be 20 myths, but I'm only giving them one. So they might, if they find it interesting enough, they might circle back next week to see what six through 10 is. So episodic is breaking up your content into little episodes, just like a TV show, um, so that people might keep coming back for more. The next level is when we might start to generate some leads. And this is when you're going to enchant them. So you, how do you do that? By offering freebies or lead magnets, like a free tool, a webinar, an ebook, gifts, trials, HTDC is offering this webinar to you today so that maybe you might want to take some of their um, longer co course offerings, right? So we're enchanting you right now with content management. Um, now they're hooked. They, you've given them something delicious and they're digesting it. It's delicious. And it's your chance to get them to enroll. Now you want to make them a customer. And this is customer acquisition. And this is when you're going to provide attractive offers that will drive purchase and signups. So the lead generation was tossing things out. And you might see things like um, download for our free book on content marketing. Let's say we do that. And then once you sign up, we've got your email address and we might send you a newsletter. And that's how um, people are building up their um, contact list. And um, but you gotta give, give away a little something for free to get people enchanted. But once they're enrolled, it's because you've given them a great content uh, offer, like um, spend $50 and shipping is free. 
that kind of thing. Sign up for um, three months of our services and we give you a month for free. So at, at the enrollment stage is when they are ready to buy. Now they're a customer. So the final point is to enlist. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, it's uh, content management or marketing, sorry, is not just to lure people in, but to keep them on um, as customers, even after they've already made their purchase. But once they are your customer and you keep them on with this wonderful content, then they demonstrate customer loyalty and they build loyalty and advocacy through quality experience and useful content. And if you've done it right, they become an evangelist for you. So now you've got a sales team working for you and you're not even paying them, but you've made them so happy because of course your product and services are amazing and you continue to amaze them by continuing to entertain and inform. So let's go now into this content marketing funnel in a little bit more detail. I've put it there on the right so you can continue to refer back to what we just discussed. But now we're gonna go into a little more detail. So what's brand awareness? You're creating awareness for your product or service. It should be organic and authentic and it's going to drive engagement. Brand engagement. Now you're creating engaging content to build trust. And this is what we're talking about. It's educational and episodic. And they, they keep following you and they keep listening to you because you continue to amaze them and you continue to educate them. And they're going to always be learning as long as they're following you. At the lead generation, and this is what I was talking about, getting people to sign up with those little freebies that you're giving away, like a download. Um, so at this point, you're encouraging people to give up enough information about themselves that you now have permission to market to them. And you, this is where you might be building up a contact list. And if you're developing email marketing, whether it's an e-blast or newsletter, and I highly encourage you to do that, um, this is how you, you get people to sign up for that. So you might um, offer, like I just mentioned, a subscription to your newsletter, or you could be giving a free event. And by registering for that free event, you're getting them onto your list. Um, and demo signups and product demos are very popular. And all of this is going to get people super engaged now. Okay, at the customer acquisition level, uh, now you need to provide what are called proof points to, pros to prospect and attractive offers uh, offered to driven purchase. So as I mentioned last one with the, those archetype audience members, uh, you want to give them case studies that illustrate how you solved their problem before. So remember, back to page one, this is not about you, it's about them. So you need to think about how have you helped people in the past? This is your chance to tell people what those stories are, case studies, testimonials, that sort of thing, so that people are convinced that you are the person to buy from. Um, you want to create any kind of content that illustrates why your solution uniquely meets their needs. And then finally, customer loyalty. So this is content that creates value or reinforces the customer's decision after the sale. At this point, you can create content that um, teaches people how to get the most out of your product or service. So now you bought this. So um, let's say you make macadamia nuts. So this is when you could say, thank you for buying our macadamia nuts. Here are some great recipes. Um, or if it's maybe they bought, you make some kind of tool. So um, here's how to use our product. Um, this is where the how-tos come in. Videos are hugely popular for that. Um, so that's the kind of content you want to create to um, retain your customer loyalty. Um, and the final one, of course, successful and innovative ways your product or service has extended to other solutions. Um, again, at the top, I mentioned that this it's a two-way conversation. So you, you don't just post and run. You want to read all of your responses. There are people out there who have used your product or service in a way that you haven't even thought of. And you're going to find out about it by reading all of those comments. And that's how you continue to build a customer loyalty. 
and also reward people that are your existing customers who are there promoting you. So we really appreciate you and that, that, that kind of comment. People love that. People want to be appreciated. Who doesn't? Okay, so types of content marketing. There are basically two departments here. There is content that you create yourself, and then there's curated content, which is content created by someone else and used with their permission. So yes, we would love everything to be original content that you created yourself. For one thing, SEO loves it. That's one of the things that Google does when they're searching all of your content is to see how original it is. So um, I've seen people that have websites that if you Google their content, you can find 30 other customers with identical content because they all bought a template and nobody bothered to adjust it. Google hates that. So when you, every, everything, all of your content, whether it's your writing, whether it's your design, whether it's videos, whether it's your social media, whether it's your ads, it needs to be original. But of course, original content costs you time and money. So that's why we turn to curated content. But it's not just for that reason. One of the things about the internet and all the commerce and marketing that happens in today's uh, environment is that things need to be reciprocal. So when you're on the internet or you're doing social media, whether you have a website, it's not just about you, 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 but you wanna build these relationships, whether it's with your partners, your vendors, your customers, uh, your potential customers, your general audience. And when you share their content, they will pay attention because we're all, right? We're all paying attention to our comments and who's sharing. Um, and then they may do the same for you in return. And that's how we build the community. And that's something like, you know, Meta and all, you know, all these companies, that's what they're trying to encourage you to do. And Google rewards you for that reciprocal uh, relationship. So even in SEO, um, they will ding you if you don't have enough incoming outgoing links. They want to see this flowing back and forth. So when you curate somebody else's content, you're not stealing, you're, you're supporting them and you're providing content to your audience that will help, again, secure you as a thought leader. Um, I do add that it's used with their permission. So for instance, you don't um, go to somebody's website and download a photo and then post it, um, even if their name is in it, because that's not quite the kind of permission that I need. But for instance, when I do social media for our clients, and again, like I said, I want it to be a good balance between um, self-promoting marketing, like here's why we're awesome and why you should hire us, and providing content that will make you, position you as a thought leader. So um, when you use, when you share somebody else's content, so for instance, I will do uh, one or two posts a week where I'm like, check out Flux Hawaii, my all-time favorite magazine, um, because they write such beautiful articles about Hawaiian culture, and um, that's very important to us here in Hawaii. I know that some of you might be tuning in from other parts around the world, but I'm sure that in your own local areas, there are things that make you proud, pride, uh, proud about your uh, local uh, community and find those local magazines. So I'm, I'm using Hawaii Magazine, Honolulu Magazine, Flux Hawaii, like I said, my all-time favorite. And that way when people are following their um, social media accounts, they're not just getting marketing, marketing, marketing for the company, but they're like, oh, they, they shared that really great article. And oh, I do need something to do with the kids this weekend, um, you know, projects and, and that, that sort of thing. So that's what I mean about curated content. You didn't write it, somebody else did. Bless them for saving you the expense and the time, um, but it's still very valuable. So these are the two types, feel free to use both. Okay, so types of content. Um, we're going to go very quickly into images, video, interactive, infographic, social media, and e-newsletter. Again, you are not the target of your content, your audience is, okay? So keep all of that in mind always. So let's start with images. Most people recall only 10% of plain text content, content three days after reading it. 10%, that is so sad. But once you get an image in there, 
the three day recall jumps up to 65%. So that's really huge. If you're scrolling through on your phone, you might not even see a post when it's just text because nothing has grabbed you. So definitely focus on good imagery. Images rule everything. Um, there's 18% more click through rates, 89% more likes and 150% more retweets. If you're on Twitter, that's really important to know. So where do you get your images? Of course, you're creating your own, right? So um, before I moved here, I was a film editor and I started saying that the whole world is my B-roll because you never know when you're gonna be able, you need something in a film. Well, the same thing applies here. Uh, you've got your wonderful smartphone. I know it takes gorgeous photos. If not, get one that does. And it, it's, Besides the photos you're going to take of your company and your product and your services, and we'll get into all the, the ideas for that later, um, but it could be just your neighborhood. You've gone for a walk. You, there's what we call beauty shots. So it doesn't need to be about your company all the time, as I've repeatedly mentioned. So um, use your phone, your camera all the time and be taking all kinds of photos. It's digital, delete it if you don't need it, upload it, save it, whatever. Uh, the day is going to come where let's say it's spring and you're like, oh, I got a really beautiful photo of a, you know, a bud emerging um, that you took last spring or the year before. And now you can use it in a social media post. So obviously creating your own images is wonderful. I'm saying photos, but of course graphics are are wonderful. As a graphic designer, I'm always encouraging you to hire people like me or do it yourself. Canva has really opened up the world to everybody to be able to do that. Um, if you're going to purchase it, you can get it um, stock photography and graphics. Um, I'm Right now I've got up here iStock and Creative Market because they happen to be the ones that I continue to use over and over again. Um, but if you want to get it royalty free, then there are um, options like Creative Commons um, and Pixels and Public Domain Review. Um, one note, be very, very careful about royalty free. Just because something says royalty free doesn't mean somebody isn't going to hunt you down later. So when you go to Creative Commons, I'm just going to focus on them for right now. You might find something that you want to use and it says royalty free, but then scroll down to the bottom of the page because it might say something attribution required. So if you don't mention, oh, photo by Laura Wygod of Lana Means, I might come and sue you for using my photo without permission. So even though it's free and even though it's royalty free, free is a, a flexible word because if you haven't used that attribution, you're gonna, somebody's gonna track you down. There are people called photo trolls who hire people in countries where they can pay five cents a photo for somebody to take photos for them. They put it up on Flickr and they ask for attribution, but they, they put it so far down that you might miss it. And the next thing you know, they're suing you for like $800. So please, please pay attention to attributions. Uh, uh, Laura? Yeah. I just wanted to let you know, we have like around seven minutes. I don't know if you want Oh my to... God, oh my yeah. God. Okay. No, this is I... very good content, but um, Thank yeah, you. I don't know if you want to jump into q and if anyone has questions. Has anybody sent you any questions? Um, no, but if you just want to... Keep okay. Going and then wrap yeah, up. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna go to super Jersey mode. Okay, <laughs> so okay. Um, video is really popular. Um, if you, you can read all my stats later, so I'm right now giving you just types of content. I'm gonna power through this and go ahead and read this and watch this later. Okay. All right. So places to get videos again. The same thing applies to royalty free. Interactive content is really important, especially for very young people. A third of them are, have a preference for this. So calculators, this one is from a company that sells um, used clothes. So they did a, a calculator, how dirty is your closet? Like what is the impact that you're making on the planet by continuing to buy new clothes? Great one, polls, quizzes. Infographics are great. This is one I did for Rotary. They're ending polio, yay Rotary. Um, so ideas could be history of your company, your industry or step-by-step -step guide. Um, people love infographics. Who doesn't love infographics? Um, here's a chart I provided that gives you all the different types of elements you might use in an infographics. Again, you can purchase them through iStock or Creative Market, um, but check this out. Canva now has them. So you can use Canva. It's free. It's wonderful. Even if you're paying the professional, it's only like 15 bucks a month. Canva is wonderful. Okay. 
When it comes to social media, you want to be precise and really think about where it is you're posting. So you need to think about who your audience is on that particular channel. The way that you post your LinkedIn is not the same way you're going to post for TikTok. Um, so here's all that advice in more detail. You can go ahead and read that. I'm going to power through this. I'm not going to even mention any of it, but come back and read it so you can see the, the type of people that are using Facebook. And these are the most popular types of content on Facebook. Same Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, photo sharing, um, video sharing. Here he is, the Ocean Spray dude, right? 15 billion media impressions. Ocean Spray did not pay him to do this, although I believe he got a truck and a lifetime supply of Ocean Spray out of it. Um, TikTok has its own special magic. I love it. Um, there's the most... Uh, popular content there. Um, YouTube is really important. Uh, here's the most popular popular types of content on YouTube. Video is huge. If you can do a how-to or behind the scenes, people love it. Mess up. People love mess ups. It just makes you makes you human. Okay, what makes content viral? Positivity, awe, and surprise. I'm listing this because it's true. Fear, anger, and anxiety. I'm not a big fan, but this is where the FOMO comes in. So it's like buy this because we're almost out. Um, you must see a lot of ads on Facebook, like we're going out of business. Nonsense. Half of those people aren't going out of business, but you think they are. So you go and buy, buy, buy. Um, utilitarian content. Um, that's where it's uh, just things that aren't, that don't fall under other categories, but they're inherently shareable. And then of course, good old fashioned link things like list fills I mentioned. Uh, okay, very quickly. How are we doing, Olivia? Uh, doing good. We have four minutes left. I have a question that came up in the chat. Um, okay. What is the best way for using customers' project pictures to post on social media? Um, it depends on uh, what it is you're promoting. We're a big fan here of we like to do a grid. This is something you can spot on Canva. So that way you can get four photos up at a time. Um, social media is wonderful for that. Sliders on your website are great. Um, also, if you're doing uh, Google, I'm sorry, Facebook ads, um, we're a big fan of you can do the five slides. So instead of just having one image, like in a boosted ad, a boosted post, um, this is your opportunity to put in all your services or in this case, um, photos of all the projects. I hope that helps. Oh, that makes sense. Um, is anyone other, any more questions? If not, um, just want to thank Laura and everyone. Oh, something. Oh, here. Another one came up. Uh, do we need written permission from customer? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And don't forget, it might seem like, oh, it's going to take me a little bit of effort, but they will be so flattered and delighted. And you don't want to potentially offend somebody or maybe they didn't want their information to be public. So absolutely ask mm -hmm. first. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. Um, yeah, I just want to thank Laura and everyone for joining us today. Um, before we wrap up, a quick reminder for the audience, this webinar has been recorded and will be shared via email for those who have registered. And then also, if you like this webinar, um, please visit our website at www.htdc.org slash e-commerce to sign up for other upcoming webinars and to view our past webinars because we have recordings up there and then just a shout out for an upcoming cohort that we are having it's a um you can visit our website um www.htdc.org cohort five and it has all these great um, content classes um, to help for digital marketing and right now we're accepting applications so um, we'll include that in the email so if you guys want to take a look at it later and yeah um thank you everyone quick, quick question olivia will the, oh, yes. I also, will the pdf version be available as well in addition to the recording because that way they could get all these links that mm. i provided that would be wonderful okay yes yes okay thank you I'll everybody so much i'm sorry that i didn't get through it all i tried to be as fast as i could yeah I'm very speedy at the end but it was really good thank you Mahalo. Mahalo. Thanks, Olivia. Bye-bye.